on. Wait, clinically? Hey, here we go. It's time to start Bollocks Talks and Tangents. I have Lenny to my left, your right, and in the studio. <laughs> Lenny. He's the one who said sound off. I Well, I made my ringer. <laughs> You turned off your ringer. Come on, I got sound on. I got the share right away. I'm, you know, I'm working on this. someday I'll have it all figured out. There's a gap between a Gen Xer and a Boomer, and you, my friend, just proved it. And thank you for that because I get called. I get called Boomer all the time on the morning show. (laughs) So we got Blake Blevins in the booth in there pushing all the buttons, making it happen. Appreciate you, Blake. Um, Fun show. We missed you last week. Thank you. Hopefully, you had a wonderful time at the ball game. Oh, yeah, sixteen four New York Mets on a beautiful. Beautiful day in Atlanta. Yes. Uh, Aiden. Aiden did not like that game. Yeah, yeah I know. Ne- nephew. I know. Uh, he didn't bring Aiden. it. He didn't bring it up last night, or Tuesday night. So I yeah. can understand. Yeah, he, he's he's a big Braves fan. Yeah. Um, boy, and our Reds got whooped this week by the uh, Mariners. Ooh. So, Let's not talk about. It. Just go to sponsors. I yeah, don't. We, want, I, we, I, we, <laughs> we swept the White Sox, and then we get we swept the team, and then we got swept. Right. So it just uh, just everybody's, really... everybody's sweeping the White Sox. But that's, that's the beauty. That's the beauty of baseball. I mean, I anybody baseball. can win any time. New York Yankees could lose to the White Sox in a mm-hmm. in a three game series. I mean, you know, there's it's just it's a great game. You know, one one good pitching outing wins wins a game. So. Um, Great yeah, game. I think, I think uh, the boys were asking me Tuesday night, uh, could the best uh, college, like, could Connecticut beat the worst NBA team? No. Or could an all-star, I think it was, could an all-stars of college players beat the NBA team? No, they can't. They just can't. So they're not, they're not there yet. Right. So, um, all right, but we got to talk about our sponsors, like Blake said. Uh, I'm going to start off with Anastasia Miniature Golf, one of our newest sponsors. Appreciate them. Located right there on Anastasia Boulevard. You go across the Bridge Lines on the right hand side. Yes, it is the one with the pirate ship. Um, they have beer and wine uh, and a great snack bar there. You can play, play golf and uh, have a brewski as you go around the, the course. Um, I think they've got a couple of red fairways, if if I'm not mistaken. They have too. some red ones. They got some, they got some yeah, multicolor yeah, ones. Yeah. Um, and uh, they did to getting out on the links. They did recarpet uh, a lot of the <laughs> uh, the the putting greens. Okay. Um, that aren't so green all the time. Uh, uh, recently, within the last year and a half. Mm-hmm. So uh, just get over there and enjoy your time over there. It's always a fun night out, kicking your uh, significant other's booty in golf. And you said Julie. Julie. Will yeah, I mean, you. right. My 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 butt gets kicked by my bride. Yeah. See, I was talking to her. Yes, I thought you. I thought you were talking to her, know, you, yeah, you I I her in that situation. She appreciates that. All right, um, Blake, you ate there today. Kaiser's Deli and Market. Uh, Kurt Kaiser. You know they got the bollocks over there, but evidently Ooh. Pete went in and Kurt told him not to eat the bollocks. Kurt, what are you doing to the bollocks show? No, he 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 basically was just picking on. Me individually. Oh well, so, yeah. <laughs> my de- my my turtle come. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. Um, but they have a great little market over there. A lot of local vendors. Mm-hmm. Amazing sandwich. Uh, Blake's White Street pressed is his go-to with oil and vinegar and salt and pepper. Nice. And now breakfast. By the way, you want to? Yeah. You want a couple eggs on a roll with some cheese and pick your pick your cold of cuts. <laughs> it's delicious. Makes a great breakfast sandwich on a nice Kaiser roll. All right, um, St. Augustine Pirate Museum. Uh, they have over 800 artifacts, original artifacts. They have one of the two uh, Jolly Rogers uh, that exist in the entire world. Mm-hmm. In the entire world. Uh, did a great fundraiser uh, with uh, the Pirate Museum. Uh, I, sh- I went there. I didn't do it. They did it all. They raised, I think, $11,000 for the reentry program with the Sheriff's Department. Nice. Um, working with the downtown business owners. Um, was, that Cindy- to, was that to pay off people's bills so they can now vote? Uh, no, it was, it, it, it is a, a it's a that would have been interesting nice. program. It's where the sheriff department, as people are leaving or exiting the jail, mm. they help them find loved ones so that they're not directly back on the street. Okay. Sometimes That's it great. might, it might be in Tallahassee. It might be in Atlanta, but they make contact with the family saying, Hey, we can get this family Ugh. member to you. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm okay with the program as long as there's somebody on the other end receiving this person. Right. So, and we, and one of our, our big topic tonight's about mental illness and some of those things right. and dealing with the homeless there's a lot of a lot of that uh, in that society where things just aren't always in balance well that's that's the so. problem with people when they're when they you know have, have repaid their debt to society as it's called and they're released from prison 
or jail. Mm-hmm. You know, I think for a lot of them, they stand there and they enjoy the fresh air on the other side of the chain link fence. Mm-hmm. But it's now, where do I go? Yeah, you know? it's it's real easy to uh, to judge when everything's going your way. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, people people a lot of times uh, don't care to t- absorb the information they uh, care to judge it's easier to judge yeah so and i'm working um, on that this is this is my, my 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 desire for my persona going forward here is to be dramatically less judgmental okay if i can i'm, I'm working on that yeah i i i, I think yeah. i've done a better job in the last uh, my first 45 years of life mm-hmm. i i uh I think I was very judgmental and like, okay, why aren't people doing this or this mm-hmm. or this? You know, it, you know, I, I came from a, a rough and rough background, you know. So I was like, oh, okay, if I can do it, I'm not smarter than anybody else. You know, why can't right. other people do it? Um, but I think uh, where I've gotten in the last probably five to ten years is, wow, I made a lot of mistakes. I un- <laughs> I reflect on all my mistakes yeah. better. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that happens after the age of 50 or, you know, you know, it's like, wow, I was such a jerk. I, I reflect on certain things that got me in certain areas and stuff like that. And then I reflect on my failures in life. Right. And I was like, wow, I, I, how did I, how did I do that? How did I miss that? Well, just, I think I'm better at that now, right. that reflection than my ego allowed, I guess, when I was 45. Well, that, that was most certainly my case, you know, but as, as we get older, I think there's some, um, subconscious, uh, desire to negotiate your way into whatever afterlife there may or may not be. And whether it's just how people discuss you when you're dead or whether there's a heaven and you got to bribe your way in there in some fashion by being a good person. Well, I used to have a little sign in one of my office. I think it was at my, uh, gymnasium office that say, says, um, start with your funeral and live backwards. Okay, you know that's that's what your reflection is, and that's where right. you want to. So you 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 right. would how you want to see people perceive you at at that yeah. point is how you should be living your life at this point. That's where you got to take attendance and see how many people showed up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, did you get your taxes done? Um, uh, a bear Kresge who's, and Associates. Who's doing, who's doing them for you? A bear Kresge and Associates said, Troy, come in on Friday. Give me a little bit of money. We're going to send that to the IRS, and we have the extension going out. Um, but these guys are just absolutely amazing. They've been busting their humps. Um, hopefully, they took a little breather this week. Maybe. Um, you know, but they're they're the best in town, and I'm so happy they're on my side. Glad to hear it. Yeah, I just sent the check off to my accountant, so she'll be very happy when she gets that. My taxes are filed, and I love that weight off my back. Believe you me. Mm-hmm. Um. But seriously, is there a good place to get booze in this town? Where, where can you get? Where can you get I can some tell liquor? you this: there's a couple really good places. Mm. If you want to get something out and hang around and have a good time in a restaurant, you need to go to Meehan's Irish Pub. They have three yes, different sir. bars. <laughs> three different bars. Um, they have Irish whiskey. They have uh, a Johnny's Oyster Bar. They got the pub downstairs, and then they got the backyard yeah. uh, in the back. Three different environments. <laughs> um, Excellent food, excellent people. Saw Reggie on the on the street the other day. You know, of course we we have the give and take of of trying to harass each other like we always do. So, oh like man! Like when two Irish people meet on the street, that's what we do. I'm laughing because he is the freaking Energizer Bunny. Oh. They just redid the floor upstairs in the Oyster Bar. Mm-hmm. The man, I, I mean, that building is gonna outlast us all because mm-hmm. it's gonna be brand new every yeah. every six months. He does it, something it, brilliant. It's, it is the Phyllis Stiller of buildings. Yeah. Has a lot of work done to it. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. yeah. But um, it looks good for its age. It looks great for its Ooh. age. And it, that's because it's Reggie. It's the third building in that location. Reggie takes yeah. such great care of it. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, so happy that they're one of our yes. partners. Yeah. Um, also, one of our great sponsors, St. Augustine Distillery and Citygate Spirits. We usually are drinking one of those, but our whiskey of the week today is George Remus. I'll come back to George Remus bourbon. Um, but St. Augustine Distillery, yeah. last week we did the, you weren't here, I did the cookie dough whiskey. You were telling me, yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, It Blake Blake even said, wow, that smells really good. Okay. So he didn't, he, I couldn't get him to try it, but it was a good sipping, and we determined that 
probably pouring it over a little bit of ice cream, mm-hmm. making make a, a little shake out of it, maybe make yeah. a little milkshake or sundae okay. out of it. It would be great. Um, but they have so many unique flavors over there yeah. at City Gate Spirits. Uh, get over there and do the tour. They're right there on Sponsor Row uh, next to Me Hands in the Pirate Museum. Um, and the flavors there, you, you know, sometimes when you get something flavored, you can tell that it's artificial. Mm-hmm. Their flavors are really spot on. They're very unique. Yeah. They're very and and, and they're, they come as advertised. Yeah. Um, the other, other uh, sponsor... Uh, best tasting tour in the country, St. Augustine Distilleries. They make amazing bourbons. Uh, they have mm-hmm. gin. They have rum. They have uh, um, vodka. Uh, just a lot of varieties of, of bourbons. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy the port. I like the Saint. I, I mean, they, they just really, they have a toasted. The toasted, the Florida. Oh, they're yeah, all, they're, they're all, all excellent. All excellent. Excellent different versions of bourbon. Uh, if you haven't been there, if you if you have family coming into town and they like to sip on bourbon or two, mm-hmm. make sure you get to uh, St. Augustine Distillery and check their website because they've they've added some smaller batch tours um, to go with their smaller batch bourbons. Um, they they they're giving bourbon lessons. They're giving specific bourbon tours. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they've got a they've got an offering. They've got. Um, cocktail making tour so they've they've added three or four tours i think there's a nominal fee for some of them um one of them is a hundred dollars but it's you know it's a full day and you're you know you're you're making stuff i believe um but it's worth checking on the website because i knew that they were putting in some different tours coming up and it looks like the the offerings are very interesting yeah no they're, they're really really amazing um all right topic of today's show Crazy people. Okay. Yeah, crazy. Well, that's what it would be called in the in the, in a previous generation. Fine. Um, but it, it's mental illness and right. uh, varying degrees of mental illness and people in history with mental illness. And the reason I wanted to do this on this day is today is actually National Adult Autism Day. Really? And okay. uh, um, April's Autism Awareness. Okay. Um, what color should I be? What color should I be wearing? You, and where is my ribbon? You, you, you. It's a, a puzzle piece ribbon. Okay. Okay. It's a puzzle piece ribbon. If you look at the back of my car, you'll see what the that, puzzle piece yeah, no, ribbon that looks I know. like. Sure, absolutely. And um, but to show uh, support at your house, you would put uh, on your front porch a blue light. Blue light. A blue light. So okay. if you look what at what's the green one for? Uh, Soldiers. I'm, I'm Something not, like that. Okay, yeah. yeah. They, and 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 the, if if you look at the Treasury Building, mm-hmm. uh, if it's if it's dark this month, you're going to drive across the bridge and see it, and it's lit up blue. Good. So you light up for blue for autism, but mental mental uh, mental illness throughout history, uh, there's a perception of what what you just said. People are like crazy people. Okay, folks okay. are gonna be they're gonna be surprised here. They're gonna when be we bring surprised. Up some of these who's yeah. on this list? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and I'm gonna add one more over here that I I didn't have on here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I I said I was gonna do it, and I'm gonna do it now. Um, I have seven people. Everybody's gonna know the seven people's names that I have. You have 397 people. Pretty much. Picking the, you know, the 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 question at this point in time is who's not on the list? Yeah. Is, Me. Is, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're not oh, on okay. that list. But Blake, I mean, you're 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 a very functioning Asperger, high functioning uh, autism adult. Um, you know, I'm very proud of how hard you work to get to where you're at. Yeah. So everyone's mental health is different. I'm mm-hmm. di- I'm dyslexic. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just nuts. Yeah. So yeah. you you're you're yeah. well you're you have the worst kind. Yeah. You're you're from Long Beach. Ooh, yeah, that's true. So, so I mean, it, they're standing they're hard, standing my shoes. There's, there's, it's hard to get out of that. But, yeah, um, but so amazing people on this list, and amazing people in our lives every day that are struggling. Go ahead, Blake. But yeah, but 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 also one thing about me is like I, I so so I like having structure, like like at all the time. Like so so it's when those like something something's a bit off. Like I I I, I get like ooh who like the, like that sort of stuff. And speaking of that. Did you guys do Ward Origins? We Not haven't yet. yet. We yeah, haven't there. yet. Okay. So we, All right. we, we, we got them written. We got them okay, written. Okay. Okay. But th- thank you for that's the structure. Blake keeps us in structure. <laughs> right. So he, exactly. He not only admitted it. So apparently, we're not that OCD anymore. He admitted it and then he <laughs> proved his point with his follow up. So that's perfect timing, Blake. Um, but no, I mean, I, there's people that are in your everyday life yeah. that 
are working hard to be neurotypical. Mm-hmm. You know, neurodivergent is the, is the the current catch catch word, um, but everybody has some types of neurodivergent in their life. It's just how. Uh, at what level it, it shows itself. Right. So it's just like breathing. And, well, and mental health is the same as if you have emphysema. It's, it's still something you have to treat. Yes. So um, More importantly now these days, it seems, because the, um, the external stimulus is getting more and more um, overbearing for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, and the desire to stay competitive or to be aware with you know phones and and tiktoks and things of that nature i think really compounds it for a lot of people i i I agree i think the shrinking of the world has created an anxiety level that and i don't know how to reverse that back time machine yeah I, i i just don't know how to reverse it back because we've shrunk our world so much and everybody's under such a microscope and you know in the 60s and 70s and in generations that you and I know, it would have been like, oh, you keep that within the family. Well, that's a lot of it, too. But there's also just so much information available that's being mm-hmm. bombarded into our daily lives between phones, tablets, television. You know, I'd say a newspaper, but, you know, you can't find hard copy newspapers anymore mm-hmm. almost. Yeah. Um, but the, the overflow of information, you know, when, when we were growing up, you had a 6 o'clock news for half an hour. Mm-hmm. And that was it. Now you got 24-hour news cycles, tough to keep up with it, um, and it's international news. You, you know, if something happened on the other side of the world, there was a, a volcanic uh, eruption in Indonesia last night. Mm-hmm. Major, major, um, big time explosion. And you know, when I was a kid, it would have taken you know two days for us to even yeah, before we even maybe did. find out yeah. about it. And it, it would have been on the 11 o'clock news, right? And nowadays. Bang. Tsunami alert. Yeah. And you had to go and look and see where. Well, just, I mean, just think of, uh, you know, when Ted Turner started the Mm -hmm. All News Network. He made the list. Everybody everybody was like, that'll never work. That'll never work. And now the All News, how many are there now? There's like four or five, five or six. Yeah. You know, maybe even more than that. Yeah. Um, You know, so, I I, I mean, there's certain, certain things that have shrunk our world. To such a level, um, and and sadly, so many and of them are instantaneously, like and, you were and, saying, yeah, and, and they're not um, dispassionate. They're not reporting the new. You know, it's hard. Let me rephrase that. It's very difficult to find a source that dispassionately um, displays the news, reports the news without an agenda, an opinion, or an angle. Placating to the sponsors. Well, that's it. But it's tough because now you've got to weed through and find out. Why are they leaning this way? You know, look, you know, there's a couple of them that are uh, obviously very, very blatant. MSNBC is as as left as you're going to go, and Fox is as right as you're going to go, and then you get O W O O O N N or whatever that is. It's mm-hmm. it's as far right as it has come back around to almost be left. Lower your hand a little bit there, New Yorker, so we can still see your beautiful face. Oh, hi. So how, yeah. how many times... Did Lenny do this, Blake? Uh, a lot more times, but we'll say so. So, so, so he moves his arms a lot. But, 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 but I've been noticing, like, like, like you, like Dad, you move around in, in your chair a lot more. Like, like you lean in, you lean, you lean out. Lenny's just sitting, like, just there. But like the entire episode, he might he, he moves his hands, but doesn't move his body. Hey, yeah, I'm Italian, man. It's in the rules. It comes, you got to talk with your hands. Well, talk with your hands, but right. we want to see your beautiful okay. face. Um, I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah. Like a Ricky Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, you know, we, and we need to get in, get into our show. But Word Origins. Oh, we're not there yet? Yeah, no. We're, I, I thought we were examples. No, we need of, to, we're examples of, of mental distress. Yeah, no, we are. <laughs> but we're, we're, not, we're not a part of history just yet. yet. Fortunately, I think. Right. Yeah, ju- okay. just yet. Right. So I, 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 I see us possibly being mentioned in history. <laughs> At some point, then we'll be an what asterisk. not right. to do. Right, there you go. Um, we need to get to 500 episodes first, then we'll talk. Cautionary tale. 500 right. episodes. Hey, all right, so I'm what, in. What, we, we're, we're probably pushing 70 now. I think so. Yeah. All right. All right. Probably, I love having a goal. We're almost at, we're almost at our hundred mark. Okay. Um, oh, that's gonna be a party, baby. Yeah, I, I I can tell you this. Mike and I together are, you know, including our radio mm-hmm. show. Or we 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 definitely cleared our thousand mark. I don't know if we got to our two thousand mark together okay. yet. 
So that's impressive. All right. Um, if you guys didn't take off Friday, yeah, you were you've been closer. Yeah. What word origins? Okay. What what do you have? Well, in the word origin world. As we were in Atlanta, and I had a wonderful, wonderful three days in Atlanta um, between the ball game and then just going out to eat and tour in Atlanta. You know, we went to the MLK Center and Ebenezer Baptist Church, um, and we were in Marietta. And Marietta Square is a beautiful little old-fashioned downtown center of a community square um, with now thriving businesses around mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. where at one point in time it was boarded up like every place else in America. Um, and there they was had a th- great softball complex in the nineties. Oh yeah? yeah, yeah. They may have still because it's a, it's a, it's a booming it's a booming metropolis now. Well, I don't know, but metropolis is yeah. a little overselling it, but still. Yeah. But it's delicious. Um, the steak I had at at Max in Marietta Square, but there was a theater there called the Strand. Okay. And there's a lot of Strand theaters. So it put me to thinking of why are all these theaters called the Strand? And it turns out that we can um, thank uh, Mark and Mo um, Strand. <laughs> I was going to say you're having a tough time with it, this name. It wasn't their, it wasn't their last name. It was it was um, Mitchell Mitchell and Mo Mark. Mitchell, Mitchell, Mitchell and, and Mo, Mo Mark, Mark was their last Mark name. Mark was their last name. Correct. And they With had a K. company called, yes, and they had a company called um, Mark Strand Theaters. Okay. And um, the Strand Theater, the first Strand Theater was actually in London um, on like a central street in there. But the Strand in England uh, is beachfront, waterfront, riverside. And this street in London was along the river. Um, mm. And so it was also. It the Strand? It was. They called it the Strand. Okay. Um, and um, I think that was the, the, where that you was, were trying to get. But that it. wasn't the name of the street. It wasn't the name of the street. It was not the name of the street. It was the it Strand. Was the, the Strand was just the 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 proximity to the water, the beachfront, the quay, all of that stuff there. Okay. I'm, so I'm, I'm a little lost. Why was it called the Strand? Is that just an they, English term for? It is. It's it's an English term that's synonymous with riverside, oceanside, beachside, waterside. Okay. And um, how that evolved is I'm still trying to work through this because... Now, you know, now you're you, going to make me do more research on I it. I know. It's good okay, for you. Yeah. But, you know, okay. like you think a strand of hair, a strand of pasta, yeah. anything, of, anything of that nature, a, a fiber, something like that. And that had nothing to do with this. It, it's, you know, maybe because they're long and they run along the shoreline, it's possible. Yeah. But the strand... But they're, they're connected. The strand in strand England, the street, was virtually their um, theater district. Okay. So there was the strand theater there. Um, um, I thought Mitchell was, and Mo. When you started going to England, I was like, hey, "We're back to Shakespeare." Well, interestingly enough, there was on this strand um, a contemporary version of the Globe Theater. Oh, okay. That did Shakespearean th- Shakespearean plays. It wasn't the one on Avon, but it was another one. Okay. Um, called the Globe. That was a you know a, a reestablished version of the one that went down. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you know. Every place in America, you know, and it was very funny too because it was like, you know, and I don't uh, know if this is an age thing. I've kind of heard of the Strand. Yeah. Blake, have you ever heard of the Strand at all? Uh, I may have heard like a band name named after him, but no, I never heard no, that. That's thing. Stain. They're playing tonight at the end. Right, I saw that. Right, I got stuck in the traffic on my yeah. way in. Yeah, the, uh, sh- the Strand. Yeah, and I don't know if I. I, I think I just. Took that as like epic theaters, or you know. Well, yeah, that it was it was just a generic, but it turns out that there's a, a number of them throughout the United States, and I found it interesting too because you know when I was looking it up, it was so there's one in California, one in Massachusetts, one in Manhattan, uh, one in Maine, one in Michigan, one in Plattsburgh, okay, <laughs> one in Louisiana, and one in New Jersey. Do they have the same ownership, or is there any? They did for franchise? a while. Well, Connection. well, in the in the late twenties. Um, Mark Strand um, Corporation was bought by Warner Brothers. Okay. Who took over all their theaters. So those Strands, Warner Brothers probably expanded it and continued right. with the name Strand. And then you have a lot of Strand theaters. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought it was very interesting because, you know, I'm going, here we are in, in Marietta, Georgia, and there's a Strand theater. Mm-hmm. But I know of other Strand theaters, so... Yeah, not to be confused with the Strand Bookstore, which is a story for another day. And when I hear Warner Brothers, I think of the Marx Brothers. Do you know the story of the Marx Brothers and the Warner Brothers? No, I don't know that I do. Okay, there was a a movie that the Marx Brothers put out, and I think it was Animal Crackers. Okay, that's one. Um, And I I think that was the one. But Warner Brothers had put out a movie called Animal Crackers, 
Well, the Marx Brothers put their movie out. They released it. did very well. The other one didn't. Warner Brothers decided to sue. Oh, wait. The other movie, it was called Animal Something, but it didn't, right. wasn't cracked. It wasn't exactly right. right. So Warner Brothers decided to sue the Marx Brothers. Hmm. All right. Groucho defended the brothers. Groucho's argument was, um, we'll change the name of the movie, but you have to lose brothers because we were brothers way before Warner Brothers was ever created because the older brothers and Warner Brothers dropped the suit <laughs> because <laughs> Groucho was outwitted them at their own. But it, it made the movie even more popular because Warner Brothers tried to sue the Marx Brothers. That's great. So that's that's how he won the argument is, well, if you're using the argument, you had it first. We were brothers. <laughs> We were there brothers before, so you're going to have to change your name to Warner something else because you can't be brothers. I'm liking that. Yeah. And for those of you at home who haven't watched a Marx Brothers movie, oh, watch a couple of them. They are brilliant. just hysterical. They are brilliant. You know? All right. Um, all right. My word origin, it, it, it's something you and I relate to. Yes. A smart aleck. Yes. All right. Blake, you ever been called a smart aleck? Uh, yes. Okay. I'd say he's too polite, sometimes, actually. No, sometimes he's a smart aleck. Okay. So he, he's, he's a sneaky smart aleck. He, the, the, the little sweet and kindness, every once in a while, he'll hit you with the jab. All right? Okay. And he's a smart aleck. All right. But it comes from a guy named Alec Hoke. H-O-A-G. Hoke. And this guy had a very unique oc occupation in the 1840s. In the 1840s, uh, Alec Hoke was uh, was a pimp. All right, are you with me here? Or you? I am. Oh, okay, all right. You, you said you, you said pimp. Pimp. Yes. Yeah. Alec Hoke was a big pimp, hat. Was a pimp. Cane and fur coat. And his prostitutes and his number one prostitute was his wife. All right. Alec Hoke would have the Johns come over, and he had a secret compartment where his wife would have them set down, the gentlemen set down their clothes, and while they were doing their business and trade mm -hmm. with the wife, he would open the secret compartment and steal all the money from the Johns out of their pockets and, and everything and go through, and which was, you know... Very few would expected. Turn, very few would turn it into the police. He became a very wealthy man in this occupation, but what he was doing is he was paying off the police officers. Mm -hmm. All right? He got wealthy and he thought, ah, I don't need to pay him off anymore. So he decides not to pay off the police officers anymore. The next week, he does the same thing. He gets arrested. All right? And because he was thinking he was so smart the police officers and the people in jail started calling him a smart aleck. Oh, you thought you were such a smart aleck, and he ended up getting in jail. Now, his brother helped break him out of jail, yeah. and that term continued through the prison system and the jail system of being a smart aleck anytime you tried to pull something over on somebody mm -hmm. and it didn't work, you were a smart aleck. And it didn't become popular until 20 years after him being, uh, he escaped from prison. So nice. smart Alec came from a pimp named Alec Hope. Impressive. That's where that term came from. Okay. So. See, you know, my father would just call me a wise ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, but, Bruce. Yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah. Um, we're, Buddy we're, of mine from home watching. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, can you see your flag? We're global. I yeah. hope so. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's certain words that you can add other Terms yeah. too, like smart. You, you can be a smart ass, a smart aleck, a smarty pants, right. you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and the word shit you can you can use in a lot of different ways too. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's as you, in hot. You can be yeah. You can be crazy as shit. Yeah. You can be the shit. Right. You can, I mean, be a hot shit. Yeah, hot shit. Right. You know, there's a lot of different. A lot of times it's just no yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, and that's a different different meaning right. altogether right. there. So, um, all right, we're talking about. Uh, People in history with prominent people with mental illness. With mental illness, I have my seven. I'm going to let you pick one of my seven over here, and which one you want to talk about? Because they, these are probably all on your 700 list of people that you yeah. have. Yeah, um, I'm looking to see who the most interesting one in is there. Who's under Who's under Joan of Arc? That is Martin Luther King. Yeah, spent a lot of time with him this weekend in Atlanta. 
Or, uh, yeah, all the streets are either. Let's, let's all the streets are. Oh, and, and his is really quick. Right. His is okay, really fine, quick. Okay, fine, because I was going to go Churchill, because that's the one yeah, that's fascinating. That, and his is really fascinating. That's fascinating, because I got him but too, yeah. Martin, Martin Luther King and how he fits into this, he actually suffered from depression, and it was. Um, he suffered from depression throughout his entire short life. Um, but he. Yeah. He reportedly tried to commit suicide twice as a teenager. Mm. And all throughout, uh, even when he was at the height of his, um, you know, what he was doing, he suffered from depression. His people around him tried to get him to go see a therapist. But in the black community in the 1960s, if you went to uh, a psychiatrist, it was very much uh, a stigma and it, you, you couldn't shake it. You couldn't get out of it. Um, you know, there's still, this is at the time people are still doing lobotomies and doing shock therapy and doing a lot of these other things. Yeah. Um, a time when if you were a gay man, they thought, Oh, you were had a mental illness. Um, you know, so a lot of things have changed over the last right. 50 or 60 years. But Martin Luther King, um, as a teenager, uh, had uh, clinical depression, and as an adult, it carried through, uh, even though he's probably one of the top five most influential people in the last 100 years. Well, two, two um, tangential side notes. Uh, I forget. Oh, um, Flagler College, which has a very, very fabulous theater department. Mm-hmm. I guess it was last year, it might have been the year before, did a, a play called The Mountaintop. Okay. Which was a two person play, a man and a woman. The man played Martin Luther King. The woman played, well, we're not quite sure because it was an allegorical creation, whether she was God or just the housekeeper in the Lorraine Motel. Mm-hmm. And this was the night before his assassination in the Lorraine Motel. And the dialogue he has with this woman in there and how she's challenging him and asking him questions and bringing him out. And it was so well done. Mm-hmm. If you get a chance to see anything in the Flagler College Theater Department, I, uh, Julie and I have seen five or six shows they've done, a couple of musicals. A couple and the of, theater is just, beautiful. Lewis Theater is yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And, and, and the talent they exhibit is great. Um, and this was this was a great one. But what I found out um, on this trip to Atlanta this past weekend is, did you know Martin Luther King's mother was assassinated in the Ebenezer Baptist Church during a service? No. Yes. Wow. Wacky. And yeah. the bullet hole. And there's a bullet hole still in the back of a pew. Mm-hmm. She was the organist. Um, his his grandfather was the first um, pastor of the Ebenezer Baptist Church. Mm-hmm. His father was the second. Um, he was co-pastor, Martin Luther King was, I think quite possibly with his father. He was third. Somebody else came in. It might have been, I forget it. And then um, Senator Warnock is now the fifth pastor of the Ebenezer Baptist Church. Wow. That's it. It's only been um, But there was a, 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 a not well, a, a young black man went into that church with a list of people he was looking to hurt. Mm-hmm. And um, he was looking for... Um, the father, who was either not there that day or something else was going on, his mother is playing the organ, and she's the, the church orbit, organist in the Ebenezer Baptist Church, and this guy just starts slinging lead and shoots the poor woman at her organ, mm-hmm. and she passes away. Mm-hmm. And they catch the guy, obviously, some other parishioners grab this guy up, mm-hmm. but the guy was not a healthy person, yeah. um, mentally speaking. Well, but I just learned that, and that's just, you know... But, and, and talking about shooting up a house is we're in the process. Oh, yes. of, we're in the yeah. process of um, moving the Canwright House, which is right. the house that got shot up because the St. Augustine Record in 1964, in their infinite wisdom, no, said, said right. this is where Martin Luther King is staying. Luckily, Martin Luther King, when he was in St. Augustine, they moved him in and out of multiple houses. Mm-hmm. A couple of them did get shot up. There was correct houses. But the Canwright House... He never stayed there, um, and the house started getting shut up. And they realized no one was home. They got inside. They tried to burn down the house. Mm-hmm. In the house, you can still see the burn uh, marks on the on the floors, and there's still one bullet uh, bullet hole where it went through the sliding glass door at the top frame from the inside out. The bullet hole coming in, that's a very famous picture of Martin Luther King uh, pointing mm-hmm. to the window has been replaced that's not still there but it's still an amazing story 
That's, of the resilience of Martin Luther King and what he was able to uh, and do. Is, is that up on the bluff on like Atlantic Avenue or Atlantic Street? Atlant- it's on Atlantic yeah. View, but it'll be moving to Collier Block or right. Purrier Park. Right. But Julie and I were, you know, touring around when we first moved down here years ago, yeah. and we're driving around and we're up on that street, and you know, we see a, you know, a, a big historical marker sign, and yeah. we just happened upon that house. It was fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of um, of the 40th Accord signs. That yeah. you can learn a lot about St. Augustine We've if, done that. if you just stop. Yes. Yeah, Julie and I have done that too. You tour. can drive and you can just stop. Yep. yep. Um, and, and there's QR codes so you can get get a, a audio on your phone. Yep. Um, and I can tell you this. When I did my walk to D.C., mm-hmm. one of the things that I promised myself I would do is I would stop and read every historic marker. Some of them were a little ridiculous. Some of them were like, wow, I never knew that. I mean, you know, I learned about Brunswick stew. Mm -hmm. You know, it's from squirrel meat. Yeah. You know, uh, and it didn't come from Brunswick. It didn't come from squirrel. Uh, It didn't come from Brunswick, Georgia. Georgia, right, yeah. Uh, um, I thought that's where it came from. Um, But there are so many different things if you just stop and read. I always got a kick out of those historical markers that say, and there's now, and it's continued on the back. Mm-hmm. You, you know you're into something good yeah. when they need both sides of that marker. And it just if you just do it in St. Augustine each time you come, take the time to. Oh read yeah, it. absolutely. It's fact. Take the time anywhere, to anywhere. When you're on, when you're on a highway and you, you get someplace and there's a historic marker. Yeah. You know, on Long Island, there's you know there's a bunch of them by New York State and other other um, organizations. <laughs> and on Long Island, there's about eight of them that said George Washington slept here. Mm-hmm. It was a running joke my yeah. entire my entire childhood. Yeah. Hey, George Washington slept here. He slept around. Yeah. Um, but uh, all right, um, who who's your? I mean, give me give me one of your. You got huh. so many over there. Give me so give me one people. that. We're, don't don't. Uh, okay. Don't uh, Dennis Miller is. No no no. And, well, it's, fine. It's, so so. And call like you, you, know, you want you want Caligula or you want Nero? We'll go we'll go back to the Roman days. Okay, Dennis Miller. Fine. There's like four Roman Roman. Uh, there's Caesar's, four. Caesar's on there. There's five of them that There's were nuts. Five of them There's on five there? of them that oh, okay. were that were psychotic. Not yeah. even they were they were downright psychotic. Yeah. These guys were fine. We so won't pick do the any. most famous one. Caligula. Well, yeah, Caligula. They made movies about, and he was just freaking twisted. He was only emperor for two years. Nero was a long time brewing. Mm. Um, Nero was Nero was just fucked. He was this guy was twisted beyond belief. Mm-hmm. I mean, you think Caligula was bad sleeping with his sister, marrying a horse, shit like that. I mean, Caligula was nuts, but Nero was. Downright dangerous. Mm-hmm. Um, he poisoned his nephew, who he was afraid was going to take over. Because of the paranoia. Yep. Yeah. Um, but before that, he wasn't sure, so he had another child drink the poison to see if it was good. It wasn't strong enough, made it stronger, and then gave it to his nephew and killed his nephew, oh, who wow. died instantly. Yeah, no, he was, he was a bad man. And, and everybody has the image of Nero fiddling as Rome burned, uh-huh. um, and there's some truth to that. Um Bless you, Blake. Thank you. Don't worry. The oh, microphone yes. was off so no one can hear it. Um, but if you sneeze and nobody hears you, <laughs> did, did it does really the tree fall down? Right. Yeah. Um, and, and he was just, you know, as he got older in life, he started portraying, I mean, he was into theatrics. He thought he was a great singer. He sucked. Mm-hmm. I mean, and he had, and he hired people. He he paid people. I guess hired is not the right word when you're the emperor. He, he, he impressed people. And I yeah. mean that um, with, with an I, not he an appointed. E. He appointed. Right. Yeah. Um, choirs of people mm-hmm. um, to either clap in one fashion or clap in a different fashion for a well, singer. Well, you don't clap for the emperor. Who are you going to clap for? Yep. Yeah. Um, and it's good to be the king. He started talking to people that weren't there and having these conversations, which a lot of these people manifest as having conversations into empty rooms. Uh, but as he got older and more, um, he started portraying theatrical roles of things that he think he, he considered himself quite the the actor, and he would he would act out all this stuff and go mm-hmm. wandering around, and he was just nuts, yeah, nuts. Okay, and he was probably the most you know Caligula was a, a little bit more sexually deviant um, and ruthless, but Nero was just freaking crazy. Yeah. All right, and you you talked about. Deviants and and I have some on this list, but one I definitely want to talk about. And first, we I want to go through. I'm going to run through our sponsors really sure. quick. And there, um, keep an eye on it. We got them rolling throughout the entire show. Uh, St. Augustine Distilleries, City Gate Spirits, amazing companies. Both of them, ones uh, on Avenida Menendez, the other ones on Riberia. Uh, go check them out. Great tours, great tasting tours. Give them a chance if you haven't been there. Uh, Meehan's Irish Pub, wonderful food. 
Best view in town of the Bayfront, right up there. You can watch I Love the Chicken Curry. Try your the go-to. Drunken Clams. The Drunken Clams is yours. Uh, Abert Kresge and Associates, these guys have been so busy this week. They saved me so much money. Don't think you're saving money if you're doing your own taxes. These guys make it work for you. Uh, St. Augustine Pirate Museum, amazing museum. They have incredible artifacts, super interactive. You can take kids. It's good for all ages there. Yes. Um, just good over there and check them out. Kaiser's Deli and Market, also good for all ages if they like food. Right. Um, amazing <laughs> job of food. They have a great wine selection, great beer selection, yep. wonderful market. Yep. And Kurt's sometimes nice. Evidently, he wasn't so nice to me yesterday. Depends if the Red Sox are winning or losing. Yeah, which, you know, I'm rooting for them to lose all the time. Um, and we might lose that sponsor because of that. <laughs> was, nah, I'll, I'll, I'll gloss it over. No, look, he knows. Look, look, if the Bears get Cal- uh They I broke think. the jinx. I don't feel bad about them anymore. Who? Uh, the, the Red, Red Sox? Sox? Sure. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they yeah. won. He gets his quarterback, he'll be happy because he's a Bears fan too. Oh, uh, okay. He's a Bears fan? Go figure. Okay. It's hard to be that. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Anastasia Miniature Golf, uh, also located right there, um, pretty close to Kaiser's. Yeah. Um, Dagley across the street. Yeah, uh, around the bend. But I'm telling you right now, the best miniature golf in town. Fun night out. They have beer, wine, great yeah. snack bar, uh, a wonderful place, and a fun place to to play miniature golf. And, as the, and who doesn't it, love miniature golf? Right. And it, it, it's staying lighter, later, you know. I was thinking last night as I was going out, you know, I remember being a kid, and you finish dinner, and you still had two hours of daylight, and that was the best time to go out and play. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking that that would be a good time to go play miniature golf. Yeah. All right. Um, I have some that are really interesting on here. I definitely want to talk about Winston Churchill sure. at some point, but I have I have here. Here's my list, and I'm going to say okay. whoever whoever puts a comment up first of these, I'm going to I'm going to talk about them. Uh, I have Abraham Lincoln, Winston Churchill. Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, Joan of Arc, Joseph Stalin, and Osceola. Ooh. So I'm gonna say stay local, like 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 relatively local, and then go with Chief Osceola. All right, works for me, man. O- Osceola. Yeah. All right. He he was um, actually not a chief. All right. He was not a chief, and uh, Florida State calls him chief, not. Osceola as their mascot, right? But he was never a chief. He was a medicine man, right? All right. Um, and most people and Melissa, we're going to talk about Stalin next because that was the first person who popped up. Um, uh, Osceola, uh, many people believe suffered from schizophrenia. Uh, he he saw visions and he saw you know as a medicine man. I guess right. you could get away with that. No peyote around here, but yeah. he was doing something. I'm sure, but. Uh, a uh, ferocious, ferocious warrior and fighter, uh, a leader, definitely a leader, mm-hmm. um, you know, of the Seminole, Seminole tribes. Mm-hmm. But uh, he was a lot of people, the most misnomer is they call him Chief Osceola. But he literally would be, he had, they don't know if it, what type of, it might have been bipolar, might have been schizophrenia, mm-hmm. but he definitely jumped from personality to personality. And, uh, a lot of people uh, associated that with him being uh, connected in a medicine man. Right. That could have been, that could have been his, mm-hmm. his spiritual shtick as a medicine man. Yes. But the interesting thing about him is, um, first of all, he wasn't all that old when he died because, well, nobody was in those days in the mid-1800s. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was captured. I mean, that was a shitty thing to do, too, because mm-hmm. um, he went to broker a peace deal uh-huh. under a white flag of truce. And they freaking arrested him, which mm. is just wrong. Yeah. You, you know, if you want to arrest him, arrest him, but don't do it under a white flag. That's just that's yeah. just bad. Yeah. Bad for business. Um, and took him and eight or ten of his, his warriors, locked him up in the Castillo. Mm-hmm. He was older and infirmed at this point in time, and older, he was, I think he's in his mid-30s. Yeah. Um, and the, Well, he had suffered so many injuries. He had been yeah. shot like six yeah. times. Yeah. So he was, he was, he was not well. Yeah. But his warriors were able to get out of mm-hmm. the prison. They escaped down the wall into the moat, swam, and got back into the fight. Mm-hmm. The U.S. Army was so fearful that they were going to come back for Osceola and attack the fort mm-hmm. that they transferred him to um, Charleston, South Carolina, to a fort out there called Fort Moultrie, okay. outside of South Carolina. The irony of that. Yes. Because where he signed his treaty was off of Moultrie Creek. Right. 
Yeah, so it's it's just a big circle. Where well, he didn't, he actually didn't. He sign didn't it. sign it. No, he they, stuck his they, kni- he right. stuck his knife through the treaty. Okay, and that's that was. There's a couple versions of that. Is that where Treaty Oaks is from? Yes. Okay. That's yeah. where Treaty Park is from. Right. Yeah. Um, and the 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 location where that took place, where he put his knife through uh, the treaty, and that's part of the reason why he got arrested. By is the that way. Davis Park there? Is that Davis? No, no, Park? no Treaty Park. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my very first. Oh, no, Davis. Davis was the uh, was the capital officer. They went and read. read yeah, his, yeah, his yeah. yeah. Um, Osceola was that? Not Osceola. Um, Geronimo was Davis. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, and Davis Park's north of town in Nocatee, and I just did what you did. Right. This. See? Yeah. It's it's hard to keep your hands down. I know. I don't know I what know. to do with my hands. My <laughs> um, <laughs> So 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 I I I, I, I actually didn't know about Geronimo being at Davis Park. So. I actually didn't know that. No, no, not Davis. No. Geronimo's not at Davis no. Park. Well, Geronimo never person, got to town. His wife did. Captured, right. captured Davis was, uh, right. or captured Geronimo was named Davis. Right. Geronimo was supposed to go to the Castillo, all right? Right, but no. But, but he got uh, stopped in Pensacola, Pensacola. Right. And they used him as a tourist attraction yep. to take pictures with the wealthy and elitist. Two of his wives and his children made it. To the Castillo de San Marcos. And his wife, one of his wives, was the first woman, woman to give birth in... The, well, I, I doubt it was the first woman to give birth when in, it was Fort in the Marion. Castillo. Yeah. Right. And his daughter was named Marion. Yeah. They, they, she, the, the wife named her Marion because of the fort where she gave birth. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but, but he, he... But along with the mental illness part with Osceola is the army surgeon who was in charge of the prisoners in St. Augustine became infatuated with Osceola as far as a, a subject and um, became basically his personal physician while he was there. Yeah. When he got transferred exactly. and this guy found out Osceola passed away, he hightailed it up to, to Fort Moultrie in South Carolina. Because he wanted, he wanted to inspect his brain. And he cut his head off. Yeah. And took his head back to St. Augustine with him. Yeah. Um, but Osceola's grave site is just outside of Fort Moultrie mm-hmm. in Charleston. And, and Julie and I, and that was, you know, when you get to cross things off of your list that you really wanted to do, mm-hmm. I always wanted to do that. And we did that last year. Um, and it was fabulous. But the story of his head gets wacky because, you know, the, the, the doctor allegedly would bring the head home. And when his son was, you know, acting up. He'd send him to his room, and he'd bring the head of Osceola in and say, you know, close the door, turn out the lights, and say pleasant dreams, and put the head of Osceola in there with him. Um, that was That's an, harsh. And then eventually the head gets donated to a medical college in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. And um, this is where the story gets murky, because um, that was the last anybody knew officially where the head of Osceola ended up. Yeah. Um, the medical college caught fire. The conjecture is the head may have burnt during that fire. Um, but there's other stories that are around that the, the son of this doctor um, grew up and went to New York and stole the head back out of the medical college, and nobody's seen it since then either. So that's that's the, the sordid tale of the head of Osceola. But there are people who will tell you to this day that they've seen orbs floating around over the fort in St. Augustine, the Castillo San Marcos. Mm-hmm. And if you look at it, and in that orb you can garner a face. Um, people have claimed it was the face of an Indian who looks very angry. Now, if you look up the death mask of Osceola, mm-hmm. they made a death mask of Osceola before they lopped yeah. his head off. Yeah. Um, it's in the Smithsonian now, but about three, four years ago, maybe, could be five, there was a symposium done in St. Augustine on Osceola, and the Smithsonian lent the um, death mask, and it was in St. Augustine for that um, brief period of time as part of that symposium. It's a little eerie looking thing. I, I can tell you this. One of the coolest experiences I have have had in my life, and I've had I'm I have that big fish type of gotcha, life. Yeah, I, I have yeah. I have a I've lived a wonderful life and the people around me have made it even better to be a part of my life. But one of the coolest things I got to do is when I was running parks and recreation in the T- Tourist Development Council, uh, we brought in uh descendants. Of family members that were at the fort. We worked with the okay. um, National Park Service. We worked with the Kiowa. We worked with Apache. We worked with um, Cherokee. I mean, uh, descendants, because there was multiple tribes oh, yeah. that were represented uh, yeah. at, at Fort Marion uh, when it was a, a prison in Carlisle. Um, but I got to be a part of uh, a ceremony 
with uh, the Native Americans and some of the chiefs, the Kiowa, and those inside the fort to release the spirits of those who died inside nice. the fort. And I'm telling you, with the whole, I wasn't allowed to smoke the smoke the the peace pipe because it wasn't I wasn't a tribal member. Right. But they rubbed the or they didn't rub they, they blessed the smoke over top of us. They say, and it was yeah. o- it was only me and like two other non-tribal people and i'm telling you right now it was one of the coolest moments it was one of those moments where you just felt like a peace amongst yourself Mm -hmm. and it sounds kind of crazy because i'm not a spiritual person in any way shape or form Mm -hmm. but it still was a very very cool moment that i got to experience in uh the painting that's in uh ty's room now it used to be blake's room is uh a painting of the great grandson of chief black kettle I don't know if you know the uh, sand. You, no. you never heard of Black Kettle. All right. Not, I Talk, mean, you may have, but not that I can tell you anything. So Chief, Chief Black Kettle, uh, the Sand Creek Massacre. So if, if, if you're out there and you want to look up a really ridiculous story, uh, look up the Sand Creek Massacre, which happened outside of Denver. All right. Okay. Um, it, it was a Kiowa, Kiowa chief. Um, or Apache chief, I'm not sure which, the descendant, they, they kind of cross back over Kiowa and, and Apaches. But Chief Black Kettle um, had, went out on uh, a hunting party with a white flag, with a flag of truce with the cavalry. Um, when he was away and all the warriors were away, the cavalry got drunk oh, yeah. outside of Denver, went in and killed all the women and children, chopped off their heads, drugged their bodies through the city of Denver. And it's called uh, the Black uh, the Black Creek Massacre. Or, I'm sorry, uh, the Sand Creek Massacre. Sand Creek, yeah. But it was, it was Chief Black Kettle, and it was his descendant who I became friends with uh, during that ceremony. Um, and that's, that's how I ended up with... I have that painting, and as... Uh, 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 na- unless you're a Native American, you're not allowed to own eagle uh, feathers, feathers unless it's been given to you okay. from a Native American. And I have I have eagle feathers from that same weekend. And, and, but that painting is so so dark and true to our history that I'll never be able to get rid of it. And the painting is of what? It's it's a painting of the massacre. It shows the white Oof. flag. It shows Blake. It's pretty dark, isn't it? It definitely is dark. Like, we're like, like, so, 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 so. When's when we often have like house tours? They have to go like, okay, we have to explain this further. So, but, yeah. but, 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 definitely, but definitely a, a, a important to have though. Yeah, it it shows a cavalry chopping off a child's head, in in the painting, in in the Native American painting style. So I don't know if you've yeah. you're familiar with that, but mm-hmm. it, it's one of those things that'll pass through our family. Uh, over time, because of that story, and it all it all came out of that's out great of that. though. Wait, hold on, wait, hold on. So, 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 the person getting chopped up was a child. Yeah, it's a child. I, I, I didn't realize that. I, th- I, th- I thought it was just. Oh, God. Yeah, there is brutality wow. because if yeah. if the cavalry attacked a, a Native American village, um, when the and they would you know and they weren't foolish, they didn't want to you know do it well. They were going to get shot back. You know, um, they massacred women and children when there was nobody there to protect them. Mm-hmm. That was horribly unfair. But while you're doing that, you know, we need to just qualify a little bit because we're talking about um, clinical depression. We're talking about bipolar, OCD. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had to look up just to clarify what basically that is. Yeah. Because, you know, almost everybody on this list and everybody over there, you know, what's their diagnosis? Clinical depression. Okay. Well, you know, you wake up in America today and three quarters of the country are clinically depressed. Anxiety and clinical depression. Uh, clinical depression is a mental health disorder characterized by persistent depressed moods, loss of interest in activities, uh, causing significant impairment in daily life. And they believe that it can actually change your brain function. Mm -hmm. However, it is reversible, they believe, with talk therapy and medication. You can restore your your, your brain structure, your brain function to um, previous levels, and, and you can, you know... Reevaluate or rejuvenate yourself in that situation. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not hopeless, and there is. I'm not going to say there's a cure for it, but there are, there are strategies and there are ways to alleviate some of that. Yeah. Bipolar, um, formerly known as manic depression, mm-hmm. 
you know, it, it's it's pretty simple. When you're manic, you're up, you're uh, you're elated, you're irritable, you're energized, and when you're down, you're sad, you're indifferent, and you're hopeless. Yeah. And you know, it's like hoo, 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 yeah, hoo, you're hoo, just hoo. bouncing back and yep. forth. Yep. All right. Um, the next person, and, and I think Melissa is the one who said it Stalin. is Joseph Stalin. Yeah. Now Joseph Stalin's on this list, and I don't know in history if there's more people that have been directly uh, the cause of more deaths than this man. Well, what's your number? Uh, it's probably over a million. Okay, fine. Of his own people. Okay, well, you know. He, 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 he hate, sent hate, people hate. into horrible, horrible situations. Yeah, between that and the famine and his five-year plans that never worked. Yes. <laughs> um, but, you, you know, yeah, he, he did it for his people. But then you get, you get Hitler between, and you don't even have to bring the war into it. Just, I mean, six million, yeah, six million people here. Yeah, you know? but I mean, but Stalin, because the Holocaust did exist. The Holocaust, a hundred percent exists. Thank you. But Stalin, directly, I, I, I believe, I, 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 and the numbers are more than a million. But I, I think I, so. I, th I, have, I thought it was. I, I thought it was a lot more than that. Too, yeah, it's, it's like twenty three. Uh, it's like twenty three something million yeah. over the time. Yeah, I thought. I thought everything there was a lot. that he yeah. was involved yeah. during his time. It's like yeah. it's like in the twenties and millions. Right. So that um, that you know laps the Holocaust. Yeah. It laps, Which laps doesn't, the Holocaust. Which doesn't diminish it in any way, shape, or form. And But Stalin uh, wa had paranoia, mm -hmm. had uh, depression, manic, had possibly bipolar. Um, and he's, he's also the one that said uh, one death is uh, a tragedy, a million is a statistic. You know, yeah. that's how little he cared about right. human life. Right. Um, just five, at five foot three. I know. Yeah. Okay. He's a little guy. Yeah. People. People don't realize how small because he would. He would position himself to be a bigger person. Right. You know, and people look, and also on this list is Napoleon, a, Governor DeSantis's list. He wore the white boots. I I thought that was uh uh I thought that was uh Marco Rubio. Oh no! I thought it was I, no. They were. I think it was. Donald Trump was ragging on Ron DeSantis during the run up to you know the primaries to see who's going to be the nominee. Oh, I thought I and, thought that was know, little Marco. He he made that was that was last that was last go okay. round. So anybody in Florida who's right, yeah, standing tall, yeah. So yeah, yeah, and, and on many lists, uh, the narcissism uh, Trumps on this list also. Oh, you think? Um, but Stalin to me is the epitome of evil of how. You know, we and we got like we didn't even get to Winston Churchill, one of the greatest and that leaders was a, of all time. That was the surprising one that when yeah, I saw that, actually, that was surprising. He actually named his depression. He, do you remember the name he gave his depression? I'm the faintest idea. He called it. He called it his black dog. Okay. You know, when he got in that dark, dark place, yeah. he named his depression. Um, here's a guy, along with uh, uh, FDR, Truman. Eisenhower, they saved the world. Right. And just a brilliant, brilliant man in history. And his depression sometimes was crippling to him. Right. Uh, especially during the bombings of, of, uh, London, of London. Yeah. Um, yeah, he had the double header. He had yeah. manic depression and bipolar disorder. Yeah. And Churchill and Stalin on opposite ends with very similar uh, disorders. Yeah. So I mean, and that—that's our world changed mm -hmm. in those six years, because technically the war started in '39. Right. You know, we didn't get in until the end of '41. Right. But I mean, technically the world started in '39, and you know, as Americans, we only think of it after Pearl Harbor. You know. Yeah. But the Brits had a rough go of it for those first two years before we the got po there. Poor polls. Oh, the poll. The polls were overwhelmed. Yeah. Absolutely overwhelmed. The French were overwhelmed. Yeah, you know, um, but we're, we're talking about Churchill and right. and, and the which position is, he was in, which was really very interesting to find that out. You know, mm -hmm. um, and he, you know, I guess he carried on. You know, yeah. he, you know, he he carried on. Yeah, know? but I mean, there's so many brilliant people that are on this list. I mean, yeah. Edgar Allan Poe, yeah. um, Abraham Lincoln. That's the that's um, the interesting one too. You know, yeah. he he wrote a poem about suicide. Um, yep, he that, was suicidal. That was, yeah, yep. that, that that was out there. Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, one of the craziest ones out there, 
Uh, she suffered from epilepsy and uh, schizophrenia. Was Joan of Joan of Arc? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, she died at age nineteen. You know, you know what her request was when she was burned at the stake because they said she was burnt for being a witch because right. of her schizophrenia yeah. and stuff like that. She had like ninety two charges against her, but you know what her last wish was, and they and they honored it. Go ahead. Um, I know this, but. The, the the preacher had to preach loud enough no one could hear the crackling of the fire. Yeah, okay. So the entire time when she was dying, the preacher was giving her her last rites. He was screaming at the top of his voice. Interesting. Okay. So that was her last last I wish. Did not know. Um, just I mean, there's so many amazing things out there. Oh. Great show. We could probably talk for another three oh, hours well, about it, it. Just just alone. Just people who who you know gone through depression and committed suicide. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and Sylvia Plath, and your, Ernest Hemingway. Your your list over there, it was amazing to see how many stand up comedians and comedians yeah. Yeah. Uh, suffer from depression. Yeah. You know, our, our most recent recent loss that, in Rich, my mind, Lewis. You know, well, Robin, Robin Williams is who. Oh, okay. Who, Richard Lewis was Richard Lewis yeah, for Yalza. sure. Oh, yeah. But Robin Williams is the one that really popped right. out to me. Right. Um, all right, guys. Was, Robin sorry. Williams was the definition of manic. Yeah. Ugh. Just all over, bouncing up and down. But, but brilliant. Guess what? That's the end of our show. Our hour's over. I appreciate you guys sticking with us the whole hour. Uh, hopefully you learned a little something, uh, made you laugh a little bit. Um, but I can tell you right now, <laughs> so many great things to look up. You know, make wake up that mind and think about it. Um, this is Bollocks Talks and Tangents, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>